Turn your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans the 8th chapter. And I'll be reading verses 1 through 6. That's Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 1 and ending at verse 6. If you have your Bibles, your iPad, your iPod, or just the page, you can turn with me. I'm reading from the King James Version, Romans 8, beginning at verse 1. Here begins the reading of God's Word. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And here's the text. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So far the text. And my subject tonight is, I am not a walking dead. I am not a walking dead. Tell your neighbor, I'm not a walking dead. The book of Romans, if you just give me a little bit of your time, I just want to paint the picture of why this particular book was written and what Paul wanted for the church in Rome, which is what God wants for the church today. It's a sad thing to know that we have disconnected ourselves from the biblical text. And the average church today does not connect with the Word of God, so we come up with our own theology, our own pep talk, our own advice as to what Christianity is all about. It's an insult to the mind of God. Here, here, here is Paul. He, he preached out Asia Minor. He was such a man with a big vision. He wasn't small. He was a man who saw the church, saw the vision, because he saw Jesus. So when you have that kind of encounter with Jesus, you can't be limited. And he was not limited. So he saturated Asia Minor with the gospel, and now he's interested in taking the gospel to Europe, to Rome. And the Christians who are in Rome, perhaps the church that was formed there, or churches that were formed there, were formed because they were at Pentecost. Tell your neighbor, don't forget about Pentecost, see? And that's a problem. The church does not like Pentecost experience. So, you know, we, we want it nice and sweet and caged, but we don't like Pentecost. But then that's another sermon. So the, the people who were at Pentecost got filled with the Spirit, gave their hearts to the Lord, and went back to Rome, and the gospel spread. Because people who are filled with the Spirit and have a clear understanding of what they believe, they share their faith. So Paul now, he wants to know, what are you all talking about in Rome? Are you all talking about the same thing that we're talking about? Because if we are Christians, we should be talking about the same thing. I don't care whether you're in Cappadocia, I don't care if you're in Prigia or Bithynia, I don't care if you're in Corinth or Ephesus, wherever you are, there is a central doctrine and it should not be compromised. 
You can't change your theology to fit the culture. If we're talking about, which is what this book is about, the fact that the righteousness of God has been given to us through Jesus Christ. That it's absolutely impossible for me to live right without Christ. It's impossible for me to live holy if Jesus is not on the inside. There is nothing in me. I was born an offense to God. I was born in sin. In sin, my mama conceived me. I don't know about you, but I was born in sin. My nature is anti-God. Nothing about me wants him, desire him, or going after him. The thing is, he wants me. And it blows my mind as to why he would want me. Low down, no count, nothing in me right, want to do right, can't do right, can't get it together. It is a miracle that he wants me. I don't know about you, you're wonderful. You know you're so good, you're moral, you're nice, but even moral people go to hell. I said he wants me. Wants me. But we don't teach that in the church and that's why people have double lives, you see. They're afraid of being straight about where they are, what they feel, what they think. Because we paint this picture that we have to come to church and perform and look good and dress a certain way. And after we leave church, we live like a yard dog. But no matter where I am, no matter where I came from, I was not worthy. He counted me worthy. Oh, you all don't hear me tonight. He counted me so worthy that he didn't pay for me with silver or gold. He paid for me with himself. Oh, come on. You better thank God that he loves you that bad. Tell your neighbor he loves you that bad. He loves you that bad. Loves you that bad. And that's what Paul was talking about. He says, that's what we teach in Ephesus. That's what we teach in Corinth. That's what we teach in Cappadocia. That's what we teach in the world of Christendom. We just want to make sure you're teaching the same thing. <laughs> and that's what's wrong with the church today. We don't teach the same thing. You can go from one church to the other and there's a different approach, a different take, a different twist. There is no other twist except that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Do I have a Bible-believing church in here tonight? So, he's talking to the people in Rome, Jews and Gentiles, and they understand superpower. Rome was a superpower at that time. So they know what it is to have power and authority to get things done. They were known for their coinage system. They were known for their roadways. They were known for their military prowess. I mean, Rome was a top dog, just like America is supposedly the superpower. So, here is how Paul gets to them in their thinking. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power not a power but the power not compared to roman authority but it's the power of god unto not political power not economic power but unto salvation to everyone that believe it to the jew first and also to the greek that's the standard is that what you're all teaching in rome <laughs> Are you all talking about the blood, the cross? 
Are you all talking about the fact that he washed my sins away? Are you all talking about the fact that he cast my sin into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered anymore? Are you talking about the fact that he chose me before the foundation of the world to show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into this marvelous light? Are you talking about the fact that I was in a slave market, wrapped up and tied up, and my master was the devil, and he went by the slave market and bust the chains off of me and brought me into this this kingdom that is an everlasting kingdom is that what you're talking about or are you talking about how to get rich quick or are you talking about how to be prosperous how to be famous how to be a celebrity how to get this how to get that for well, you see that's where the church went off track you see so we have a whole bunch of people that don't even know who they are oh but I'm here to remind you that you're the love child of Jesus come on and put your hands together and let me hear you praise him I want you to know that you cannot teach anything else differently and call yourself a Christian. Call it a club. Call it an association. Call it an institution to get things done. Because that's what the atheists call themselves. They say we are just as good as you are. We feed the poor. We travel to different countries and do medical mission. We are good. We don't, we are, as a matter of fact, we are better than some saints. Because some of the things that the church people do, we don't do. So what is the difference? The difference is Jesus. That's all it is. The difference is Jesus. He knows what he was getting. He knows he was getting a skunk. He knows he was getting somebody that can't get it together. Ah, that's what makes the devil mad. He knows that I was trash. Getting ready to go into the garbage can. But God reached all the way down and picked me up and doted his love on me. Oh, you better praise God for loving you. That's the difference. I just want to know, you guys in Rome, do you know that you're justified? Because we teach justification in Ephesus, you see. And we teach it in Corinth. And, and we teach it in Cappadocia. And we teach it at the church of Philippi. Everybody knows the same thing. I just want to make sure you're on the same page. You see, because you can't go from one church to the other and hear the same salvation message. As a matter of fact, it's rare to talk about sin and salvation. Ah, oh, you go from one church and you get a hype here and a touch there and you get a little thing here and you get some prophecy over there and you get somebody telling you where you're going and then next week you ain't going nowhere and then you're frustrated and then you become a Hindu or a Buddhist or you go somewhere else because somebody Somebody didn't tell you that you belong to Jesus. Tell somebody you belong to him. I don't care where you go. If he call you, you ain't going nowhere. Uh, backslide even if you want to. Go to another religion. Sit down and cross your leg and deep breathe all you want to. When you get through deep breathing, he's coming after you because he chose you for himself. Come on, praise him just a little bit. I want to hear you praise him. Not by works, lest any man should boast. Can't nobody get cocky in here tonight. Ah, but it's a gift. Oh, come on and thank God for the gift of salvation. I didn't deserve it, but he gave it to me anyhow. Oh, come on, cutie pie. You ain't all that wonderful. If we looked in your closet, we'd run out of here. It's a gift. It's a gift. Oh, glory to God. Now, I just want to know if I came to Rome, could I preach at your church? Roboshkabas. <laughs> if I came to Rome, would you invite me to your pulpit? Or would you 
excommunicate me because of the message that I preach. For it's the same message, it's the same message, it's the same Jesus, the same Jesus. And there's only one interpretation to a text. We can twist it and turn it around. Only one interpretation, but many applications. Oh, come on, Jesus came all the way down, took on this robe of flesh, walked the streets of Galilee, heal the sick and raise the dead, gave sight to the blind and cast out demons, hung out with sinners and changed prostitutes. Oh, but one day he walked up, he walked up Golgotha, and he had me on his mind, and he carried a heavy cross, but he didn't just carry it, he hung on it, ah, and he shed his blood so that I can raise my hand and say, I'm a father. Do I have a Christian church? Can I come to your church and preach that? Is that the central theme of your message? Or is there a little fluff, a little candy, a little gravy, a little juice, just to make you hype? A little opium, a little spiritual heroin, a little spiritual legalized marijuana, just to get you over. And the next day you want to commit suicide like some preachers have done. The devil is a liar. I know who I am. I belong to Jesus. Ah, I am persuaded that he's able, he's able, he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. When I leave here, I belong to him. When I get in my bed, I belong to him. And tomorrow morning, I don't care what goes on in my life, I still belong to him. And no demon can separate me from the love of God. Come on and let me hear you praise him. Now, you see, if I know that I'm justified, as Romans 5 and 1 says, that means that I was standing in the courtroom of heaven and, uh, and before the legal system of heaven and, and, and I was guilty, you see, I was guilty. I, I, I couldn't cop a plea because I was guilty. I, I was caught with my hand in the cookie jar, you see what I'm saying? I was guilty, guilty, guilty. I had all the evidence stacked against me and my, 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 my advocate, my big brother, my advocate, my big brother, Jesus himself jumped in front of me and told Oh, my daddy, I know she's guilty, but look at the stains in my hand and uh, look at the, the holes in my side. Uh, just, just give her another chance. Uh, uh, and the judge said, uh, I set you free. Uh, no charge. Uh, and that doesn't have to happen every day. It happened one time and I'm free from that moment unto eternity. Come on, put your hands together for being justified. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty, 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 not guilty. Oh, come on and praise him. I said not guilty. But, but Pastor McCullough, you don't know what I've done. Jesus declares you not guilty when you accept the finished work of Calvary. You're not guilty because you joined the church. You're not guilty because you can sing. You're not guilty because you can work in the administrative office. You're not guilty because you're married to a pastor or a bishop. You're guilty because Jesus set you free. That's why you praise him above everybody else. Nobody want to say hallelujah, you say it loud. Because you know what the guilt was. You know what the mess was. Can't nobody tell it like you can tell it. You were there and you did it. Oh, but when you look back and see where he brought you from. Nobody has to tell you to say hallelujah. Because now he declares you not guilt. See... When, when, you, when, you, when you understand that, when you understand that, that's what Paul is establishing in this epistle, the longest epistle, the epistle of righteousness, justification, sanctification, and holiness. That's what this epistle is about. When, when, when you understand that I no longer have to walk around and apologize for my past because the Lord washed my sins away and there is a literal physical sea there's a literal physical sea that he cast my sin in it's not an imaginary sea 
it's a literal sea and it's called the sea of what forgetful oh come on so why are you remembering why you allow people to make you remember he put it in the sea of what so I'm justified saved justified regenerated and I'm being sanctified is, is that what you're teaching in Rome hey Romans is that what you're teaching is that a strange doctrine to you <laughs> you, you all heard your Romans you all heard that word because I talk about it in Ephesus I talk about in Galatians I talk about being separated and set apart <laughs> is that what you're teaching Rome or you all just come to church and have a little song and go home and live the same way every day oh but we teach sanctification it means I've been called not only to be saved but I've been called to live holy did you hear what I said I know that we have been told that there's some things that we have in our lives that will never change and that we have to adjust to it and that we have bouts and we dip and we run back to church and we dip and we run back to church so we live a life of dipping and running running and dipping but there's no real peace and there's no real growth there's no real glory to glory that's why we are depressed and we play games and we live double lives because we don't believe people can live holy and we teach it as if it's a disease Lord have mercy but holiness is possible Lord have mercy not because I'm clean but because he is holy and where does he live right on the inside oh come on ladies and gentlemen it's not impossible to live holy if Jesus is reigning it's not impossible to live holy if he's calling the shots it's not impossible to live holy if he's influencing my life the devil is a liar this slap we church stuff where we dip and do what we want to do and still maintain our position and our titles is an insult to the sanctification process it's an insult because <laughs> God doesn't have a sloppy economy no call to be saints we're too high tech to use that word. But I'd rather stay with the Bible than technology. Call to be different. That's what holiness means. Holiness doesn't mean a long dress. Holiness doesn't mean I look dowdy. Holiness doesn't mean I walk around with my hands clasped like Mother Teresa. Because some people do that and they live a hellish life. So it doesn't mean all of that. Holiness means I'm different. I'm different. I'm different. I don't sing on the choir on Sunday and then come down a pole in the club with a song. I'm different. Oh, y'all don't hear me now. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. It may be my last time, so let me hit it good. Let me hit it good. Let me hit it good. Doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes. Doesn't mean that I don't fall. For the Bible says, if any man sin, all he has to do is confess his or her sin confess agree with God that this is offensive to you agree with God that is distasteful to you agree with God that you don't like this he said he's faithful did you hear what I said he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and then to cleanse you and the word there is to give you therapy so you won't have to do it again. So I'm, 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 I'm saved, I'm justified. And sanctification doesn't happen all at once. It's like peeling an onion. Every day he's peeling off something. Every day he's peeling off something. Something he peeled off last year is not what he's peeling off this year. That's why some of you all don't like to hang around a sanctified church because you don't like the peeling. You don't want to come to no prayer meeting because you don't like the peeling. 
You don't want Bible study because you don't like the peeling. Huh? Oh, but there's something wonderful about the peeling. Because when you turn around, you see something different. Say, so, oh my God, I never looked this good. Say, so, oh my God, that dirtiness is off of me. Say, so, oh my God, that taste is out of my mouth. Help me right here. Help me, help me, help me. Somebody help me right here. I said, the taste is gone. But we don't teach that anymore. You know you can lose your taste, you know. When God gets through with you, you lose your taste for sin. As a matter of fact, you see it coming and it makes you sick. It gets near you and want to vomit. That's when sanctification is working, baby. Because the thing that used to turn you on now make you sick. Thank God for sanctification. I need you to help me praise him for sanctification. It is possible. Tell your neighbor, it is possible. Knowing all of this, and I'm almost finished, I just have two points and I'm done. Verse 6 got a hold to me, Bishop Cousin, two weeks ago and grabbed me by the neck and wouldn't let me go. <laughs> For to be carnally minded. And today the church is carnal. And you know why we like it carnal? Because then we don't have to live hard. We don't have to do much. You see, because carnal people, they don't want really hard stuff. They just want to be entertained. They, they just want to feel good. Carnal people are into feeling. Feel me, feel me. I want to feel, I want to feel. I want to feel better about myself. I want to feel like I'm going somewhere. I want to feel like I'm, I'm going to the top of the mountain. Slap me, no good. I want to feel like I'm a millionaire and can't pay one bill. I want to feel, I want to feel, I want to feel, I want to feel. And we, we have gone now into the feel ministry. And all we do is try to make people feel good for about an hour and a half and send them home. Ah, but there's an indictment against the church. There's how dare you release those people without the truth of the gospel ah the bible said in the entrance of his word give that light we have robbed them robbed them and i rebuke every robber in here in the name of the lord jesus uh, go back and give people what god said to give them you owe it to them uh, to tell them what thus saith the lord even if they don't pay any money Because that's what we worried about. <laughs> the game is over tonight. Shabo shikande rohoska. Rihish kamandundo yabo. Somebody help me praise him. Pradiyata. Oh God, you help me at a man so I said the game is over, devil. You will not bamboozle the saints anymore. I release them now into the name of the Lord Jesus. But they shall know the truth. And the truth shall set them free. There are people in here who are tired of sin. They're tired of their own sin. They're tired of their life. They want to live a life to please God. But somebody didn't tell them how. Come on and praise God for truth in here. Of nipping and dipping tired of coming to church depressed tired of living a double life tired of not having the joy of the Lord tired of not knowing that even if you fall you can get right back up again ah, but here is what I want to leave with you to be carnally minded carnally minded means that you have an inclination to please you. You live to please yourself. I live to please my flesh, my desires. I have a certain taste and I'm driven to please it. Now it doesn't mean that you're not saved. It doesn't mean that you're not washed. It just means that you're not living the full and free life. It means you're miserable. It means you're suffering from spiritual schizophrenia. 
because you see you're in the church and you hear the word but you're so committed to your flesh you don't live the word so you can't be happy ain't no happiness in that because every time you come to church it's a conviction every time you come to church and hear the word it messes with you uh, and you say yes and you cry and you do some little crocodile tears but you go out and live for yourself and then the next day you're almost suicidal the devil is a liar come on church I'm freeing somebody from suicide it's not the will of God for me to be the prince it's the will of God for me to walk in freedom for whom the son sets free he or she is free indeed but carnality is a trap it's a trap it's the flesh Romans 6 and 17 but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin you see before you got saved we didn't have to think about sin we just did it there was no analysis there was no contemplation oh there's a little conscience and a little conviction because even the raunchiest sinner has a little conscience but it was no big deal it was no big deal to sleep with somebody else's wife as a matter of fact it was very interesting because stolen waters are sweet it was no big deal to spend your money on alcohol and and to live a certain way it's no big deal to lie on your income tax it's no big deal to gossip and be jealous it was just the thing to do it came natural so I said, well, I've never been like that liar, 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 liar. You may not have been like that outwardly, but the Bible said we sin in three ways, thought, word, and deed. You saw yourself killing somebody, ain't never done it, but don't say that the thought ain't been in your mind. And given the opportunity, you would have gone there, but for the grace of God. You trust your cute flesh too much. This flesh ain't no good, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible said it's an enmity to God. And unless you accept the fact that this flesh fights God, wars against the spirit, the spirit says pray and the flesh says sleep. The spirit says fast and the flesh says eat a hamburger. Lord have mercy. The flesh says don't call and you get up early in the morning and call ten times oh this flesh is after your joy and this flesh is after your destiny and it's after the glory of God in your life but you don't have to listen to the flesh the flesh is not your daddy anymore you got a new daddy and his name is Jesus come on and put your hands together for your daddy yes see this flesh yields its members as Romans 6 and 19 says to serve uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity but now yield tell your neighbor yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness in other words now you can't say I couldn't help myself see when you're in sin you ain't got no power Sinners don't have power to do right. And even when they do good, it's still wrong. But when you have the Holy Spirit, Jesus reigning in your life, there's a power there. There's a power. I want you to understand you have a power. For you saints that are struggling, and we rub your back when you come to the altar, and we put a little pat pat on your head like you're a baby, and like you need to be birthed. Somebody need to look you in the eye and tell you, you don't have to live like that. There's a power inside of you. And all you have to do is exercise that power. Ah, oh, you don't have to beg nobody to love you. You're a love child. You don't have to beg nobody to take care of you. He's your Jehovah Jireh. You don't have to walk around and cow lick nobody. You got a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Is this what we're teaching in Rome? Take them in the office for hours and rubbing them and giving them some kind of pop psychology and two weeks later they're almost in the mental ward cutting their wrist because only the word of God can set you free 
You hear what I'm saying? When you know who you are, it does something to your psyche. When you know that even though you're flat broke, you belong to God. And how much he paid for you. And that he died for you. And you're not an afterthought. And you're not somebody that he picked over. He chose you while you were in your mama's belly. While you were in your father's loins. Even before he hung the sun and the moon, he wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life. You're not a leftover. You're a choice pick. Lord have mercy. And when you know that there's a certain way you carry yourself. Flat broke but you carry yourself a certain way. Fail but you lift your head up. Because you know that you know that you know that you know that you know. That if it had not been for the Lord on your side. Come on lift your head up in here. I'm talking to the weak saint. I'm talking to the half backsliding saint. I'm talking to those who are struggling. Romans 7 is a magnificent chapter. For I know that in me that is in my flesh, he says, dwell it no good thing. See, that, you see, I, I'm, I'm so sorry that we told you that there's something good about you. I'm so sorry. You know why? That's a damnable thought. Because when you find out what you really think and what you're capable of doing that's why you can't come back to church with your head up but if you know that you're a scoundrel and that there's no good thing in you you ain't shocked <laughs> why are you so shocked that you can cuss ah. oh come on you sanctified people don't you look at me like i'm crazy because you cuss at home. Ask your wife. Come on here. Why are you so shocked that you have a bend and a twist to go a certain way? Why are you so shocked? Who died and told you that you were born righteous? That's why Jesus said to the Pharisees, I didn't come to you. I came to call sinners. 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 I, call sinners. I know you think you're wonderful, but deep down in your belly, there's a law of sin. Ah, this flesh is absolutely no good. Not McCullough, Romans 7 and 18. Get mad at that. hate that I'm just reading it Paul the apostle he kept it real tell your neighbor keep it real all that old phony righteous looking wonderful stuff went out the window I said it's gone this old stuff of celebrity looking a certain way bling bling and ching ching and, and acting like you're in Hollywood that went out the window people are not looking for that anymore they're looking for Paul what did Paul say I'm keeping it real I'm keeping it real in me dwelleth no good thing don't look for me to be wonderful ain't no wonderful for to will is present with me, but how to perform. I know what to do, but I just can't perform it. I know I shouldn't go over there, but I just can't stop going over there. For the good that I would do not, but the evil. I don't want to do the good. I don't want to come to prayer meeting, but I want to do something else. Because there's an evilness inside of me. Ah, he says, but listen to me. It's not hopeless. Tell your neighbor it's not hopeless. You see, when you know what you, if you know yourself, if you know yourself, you have to know yourself. That's what's wrong with us. We, we kept you from yourself. Dressed you up. Slapped you up. Prophesied you up, but didn't show you yourself. Because maybe if you saw yourself, you would have a different attitude towards God and yourself. You see, I know I'm no good. I know I need him. 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 Oh, do I need him? I need him. I need him. I need him. I ain't impressed with no preaching. I need him. I need him. I need him. I need him. I need him after I preach. I need him before I preach. I need him while I'm preaching. I need him. I need him. I need him. I need him. I need him in the morning. I need him at night. Ah, I needed him yesterday and I need him today. And God knows I'm going to need him tomorrow. I know that if it had not been for the Lord, I would have hurt somebody.
I know. Oh, wretch that I am. <laughs> Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? But here's the answer. I thank God. I thank God. Don't you thank nobody else, honey. Nobody else can do this but God. I don't care if I give you 10 positions. That flesh is still reeking. I don't care if I slap a collar around your neck and call you by your name. That flesh is still stinking. Oh my God. We think that if we give you a title and give you a position that you're going to be all right. That's where the problem is, you see. Because when the collar comes off, the flesh stands up. Oh, but thanks be to God. Oh, you better thank him, thank him, thank him. Buck naked, thanks be to God. Oh, I don't have to live a double life. Thanks be. Oh, you all ain't helping me. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Now, I, I want to talk to you about what carnality looks like. Stay with me, Bishop Sellers. Stay with me. Stay with me. What it looks like. It's the flesh working something. My flesh is always working something. What does this flesh want? What does the flesh want? Want a new house? Yes, a new house for adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, always creating division, always gossiping, always creating something, envying, murders, drunkenness. This is to the church now. This ain't to the world. This is to the church. This is Romans to the church, to the church. Come on. This ain't you no know, heathen now. We're talking about church people. Drunkenness, reveling, and such the like. I tell you, this is what the flesh likes. Don't tell me the flesh doesn't like it. Because it brings pleasure. That's why you do it. Flesh does it. Because it gets, getting, it's getting butt quiet in here. But flesh does it. Because flesh likes it. Oh, if you don't say that, you're going to trip up before you leave here. Before you leave this convention, you're going to trip up. You better say to yourself, flesh likes that. What is he doing with that trash? Flesh like that trash right there. <laughs> oh, I know y'all are going to... Listen, I'm, I'm leaving now. I'm leaving in a few minutes. It's in us. James said in 114, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. Ain't nobody seducing you. Your own lust. Lust is in us. Lust for power. Lust for somebody else's position. Lust for money. Lust for being famous. Lust for this. Doesn't always have to be sex. Lust is lust. Wanting something so badly that you forget who you are. Drawing away your own lust. But here's what I want to end with. Carnally minded is death. What does that mean? That means I'm going to die? Sometimes we wish we would die. You know, you can be caught up in something so badly and so shameful that you wish you would, you would... That's why people take their life in the church. That's why it's becoming very popular for preachers and people to take their life. Because they're caught in the quagmire of a mess. And they don't see any way out because we didn't help them. We didn't help them. <laughs> they don't know where to go to get help. And if they go to get help, they just cover, put a sheet over it, and don't know under the sheet the stuff is still going on. Now, listen. Carnal minded, if I keep going back to the same stuff, it's going to kill my anointing. 
is going to mask my vision. It's going to sap my energy. I'm going to be like Samson. I'm going to shake and nothing is going to happen. Oh, I'm talking to somebody tonight. You're getting ready to shake and ain't nothing going to happen because you won't back up, back up, back up, back up. God didn't call you to live in squalor. He called you for something better. Tell your neighbor he called you for something better, something better, something better. And don't tell me you can't give it up. Oh, yes, you can. Because Holy Ghost is in you. And Holy Ghost got a better taste than that. Holy Ghost got more for you. It's only because you are leaning towards carnality. Now just start leaning towards spirituality. Just lean, 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 lean. Come on, lean over, lean over. Come on, switch over, switch over, switch over. Come on, get over there, get over there. And you wake up and say, oh, my God, I'm so glad that I got out of that. I'm so glad I don't have to live like that. To be carnally minded means that I have lost my drive, my stamina, my insight, my wisdom. Oh, I've got the look. I've got the position. But ain't nothing happening. It aimed to kill the very thing that God has given you. Your assignment is being compromised. That's why Joseph said, oh my God, the boy was fine. I know he was fine. I wasn't there, but I can imagine him being fine. I know he was fine. Probably had some biceps and triceps. The boy was fine. The boy was fine. And the boy had integrity. And he had a destiny. Sold by his brothers. So he had a reason to be mad. He had a reason to have a chip on his shoulder. Ah, oh, he should have used his pain to get self-gratification. But instead he kept his eye on the dream. Kept his eye on the dream. Tell your neighbor, keep your eye there. Keep your eye there. That's what's wrong with you. Took your eye off your dream. God called you before you were born to do something particular. Ah, oh, and you're being distracted. And I rebuke the spirit of distraction. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you foul spirit of distraction back up off this in the name of the Lord Jesus and Joseph sold in a strange land in Potiphar's house walking around doing his job and seduction came but he said how can I do this thing to my God. You see, when you love him that much, you make hard choices. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's what's wrong with the church. We're always patting you and petting you. Ah, oh, we got to make some hard choices. How can I give up everything that God has called me to do for a one night stand? How, 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 how? How can I do this to be associated with a bunch of cut throats and liars and thieves. How can I give up the ministry to hang out with low life and renegades? Oh, come on here. I got something better. I got something better. I got my eye on something. I got my eye on something. I'm going somewhere. It may cost me friends. It may be lonely. It may cost me money. I may be isolated, but I'd rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness just for a season. I need somebody to help me. I feel the fit coming on. I feel the praise coming on. Come on and help me praise him. This is a season for hard choices. Tell your neighbor, this is a season for hard choices. Our affiliations are troublesome. Our affiliations are troublesome. Our connections are under scrutiny. Lord have mercy. Ah, the stuff that we're getting into, God is watching it. Ah, is it going to take you further or is it going to take you closer? Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Carnality is a tricky thing. It doesn't always come with sex. It comes with possibilities and it comes with invitations and it comes with things that we've always wanted to do. But every now and then we can say to the devil, I know I like it. Ah, it's something I always like. It does something to me when I do it but right now I said right now I'd rather have Jesus than what you got to offer right now 
I'd rather have him than what you're showing me right now. I'd rather go that way than to go your way. I need somebody to help me quick, help me quick. Come on and help me praise him right here. I need the church at Rome to help me. Spiritual. When we are carnal, our conscience become dull towards the things of God. Let me tell you what we do now. When we do that, we now create a whole system of Christianity that is anti-biblical, but suited. It's called situational ethics. We have replaced biblical theology with situational ethics. Oh, fornication isn't bad when it comes to me. Oh, being a preacher and having a daughter out of wedlock has become a glorified situation. It ain't biblical now, but it's because it's me, it becomes special. So if it's special for you, it's special for that young girl who had been sleeping around with Tom, Dick, and Harry. And now she's got three children with three different fathers. But your example gave her permission to walk away from God and go and pick up three babies. And don't know who the daddy is and can't get a job and on welfare. But you set the example and you changed the standard and you didn't give her truth and you didn't give her hope. And now the church church has messed her up and now she's an atheist <laughs> to be spiritually minded is life the opposite of a dying situation is life now I'm going to close with this because we think spiritually minded means church work You think spiritually minded means that I feel something. And I don't know what you're feeling. Because everybody's feeling is different. It has nothing to do with feeling. We have taught it in the church. When I grew up, you had to act like you were feeling something in order to shout. So you close your eyes and knock over the chair because you were waiting for the feeling. And you know you didn't shout unless you felt something. And sometimes the music took you there so much that you started feeling the drum, the drum and the bass got up in your belly and you felt something. And your feet started moving like you're in the dance hall. The same thing. But the test of spirituality is not feeling. Because there's some days I don't feel anything. There are some days that I don't want to feel anything. So it's not about feeling. It's not even about preaching. It's not about preaching. Because we can preach. We can just take a text. I've got some little children around me. I'm, I'm raising all these children now. And, and they can preach. You know, they have their own little service. And then they lay hands on each other and fall out. So we, we learned that in church very well. We learned how to preach before we could even walk. Oh, yes. So that, that don't mean nothing. We can go on the internet and Google somebody's sermon and preach it on Sunday morning. That don't take much. What is spirituality? And I want to know, I want to know Because I want life and I want peace I want life and I want peace I want life and I want peace ah, I don't, I'm tired of feeling bad about myself I'm tired of faking my way ah, I'm tired of coming to church And developing a whole new culture To, co to cover for my, my restlessness Ah, my disgust of myself. Why don't I have peace when it's a part of the package? Something is wrong. It's because I'm not spiritual. What is spirituality? Very simple. No Greek, no Hebrew. Very simple in English. Just obey the word. That's all. Spirituality is a... Uh-uh. 
Spirituality is God said it. I don't like it. I don't feel it. I never did it that way before, but I'm going to do it. And the moment I do it, I take on more of the likeness of God. And the more I take on the likeness of God is the more I resent the acts of the flesh. You see, if you can't stay neutral in this, you can't be in the middle. Either you're going towards him or you're going towards your flesh. Oh, come on here. Even in Alcoholic Anonymous, they'll tell you when you, when you, when you, when you hang out with certain people, you're going to end up back in the bar. In the bar. Ah, when they want to do rehab, they send you away, all the way away somewhere, and tell your parents and your friends, don't visit, because you are the one that were bringing the drugs. Stay away from anybody that will take you back. Only in the church, we like to snuggle up. You know you can't snuggle. <laughs> you got to obey God. And when I obey him, I become spiritual. So spirituality doesn't have to do with my hands shaking or being mystical or going up into something or slapping somebody in the head. It's how did I do it? Did I do it, God? Did I do what you wanted me to do? And then he said, well done, well done, well done. Uh, come on up higher, come on up higher. Ah, uh, God, I didn't do it yesterday and I fell down. Oh, but get up and do it again. Uh, isn't that what he said to his disciples? I sent you out and you didn't do it right, but I'm sending you out again because uh, I chose you to do it. Uh, and God said, I call you to be saints. Uh, I call you not to live a life of condemnation. I rebuke the spirit of condemnation nation walking around with your head hung down uh, and only get a little shake and a jerk uh, and cry at the altar and go right back to that mess no bend towards him bend towards him uh, wake up in the morning and tell him god i feel like smoking a cigarette because <laughs> you know some churches don't believe anything is wrong well the bible didn't say it, but at least the world tell you that your temple you know, needs to be protected from all kinds of disease. So just go science, go science. Since you can't go spirit, go science. But it's the will of God for you not to be a chimney. Because cigarette smoking is psychological, you see. It's not just physical. When you smoke, it gives power. It calms your nerve. It tightens you up. And so it's idolatry. Because God says, I want to tighten up your nerve. I want you to cast your cares on me. I want you to trust me. Put that cigarette down and take a breath of me. Trust me to take you through. You don't need the cigarette to make you feel good. Oh, you cigarette and cigar smokers. Jesus, help me tonight. Uh-huh. Ah, you can't preach and puff cigar. I know in certain denominations they work they use pipe. Oh, it's very, very in vogue for the man to walk around with a collar with pipe. But I'm talking to Pentecostals right now. Ah, I'm talking to those of you who have been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Ah, you don't need a puff. Ah, you just need a drink. Lord have mercy. And once you get a drink of the Holy Ghost, ah, you're able to contain yourself. Ah, Paul said, after I get through bring me in, son. Ah, after I get through preaching to you, ah, I better bring myself under subjection uh, lest I be a castaway uh, and God has given every one of you the power to make the right choice he has given every one of you the power to say no to the devil inside of you uh, is the authority to walk away from anything uh, for greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world And let me apologize for the fact that we robbed you of this confidence. We never told you you could live it and like it. <laughs> Jesus. We never told you you could live it and have peace. We never told you you could live it and have life. We just try to customize it to make you feel comfortable. You're not supposed to be comfortable. You're supposed to be free. You're not supposed to be hyped. You're supposed to be taught. So that when temptation comes, 
you'll be able to say, like Joseph, how can I do this? Because you realize how much of him you have in you. Tell your neighbor, I got him in. I got him in there. He lives in there. He ain't in the ceiling. He's not in the Sistine Chapel. He's not hanging on some wooden cross. He's in me. And the closer I get to this, the more of him I become. The more of him I become. The more of him I become. The more of him I shed off. Take on. Shed off. And one day I can look back and say, I have a testimony. I used to. But he took the taste out of my mouth. Is this what you all preaching in Rome? Stand up and give the Lord a standing ovation. Oh, come on. I want to hear you praise him. Hey. Want to hear you praise him. Oh, you're not going to like me for this. You know why? Because it's easier to pet people than it is to teach people. It's easy to get people to make you a celebrity than it to make people a disciple. I can't be a celebrity and be your teacher. Because when I start teaching you, that's why Jesus said, will you also leave me? Because what I'm teaching you requires a sense of commitment. So, I'm asking for those of you tonight who really want God in a way that you can live with life and peace. You know how much he wants you and that fact alone gives you the power to live differently. With this fact, listen, any woman here who knows that your husband loves you in a way that he will take the bullet for you, there's a certain way you carry yourself. Any man knows that if the woman is committed to him and adores him and trusts him, he walks with confidence. That alone gives him a pep in his step. Any woman knows it's not the dress that you buy or the jewelry that you give me. It's to know that you dote on me. That you love me with an undying love. And even with my quirks and my idiosyncrasies, you're sticking with me. <laughs> and nobody else got your eyes but me. And even when we have a little problem, we work it out so because we ain't going nowhere. That woman don't need another dress. She put on the old one and looked like a queen. Well, that's the same thing with Jesus. You know how much he loves you. There's a certain way you carry yourself. So tonight, I'm asking for those who are going to walk out of here and don't have to live a double life. Come in a real way. And let God know, Lord, I just want it real. I want life. I want peace. I don't want to show. I want to live different. Anybody here, just come to the altar. Just come quickly. I don't want to be churchy. I want to have a real life with Jesus. Anybody here? Just come quickly. Anyone else? Come, sweetheart, come. I desire, I desire anything, anything that is not of you and is of me. I want more of you and less of me. Yeah. me. Anyone else? Come. Christian.
Christianity is real. It doesn't have to be sloppy. It can get real good. Those of you who are really, really excited about what God is doing in your life and you want to keep it that way, you want to be more obedient to His Word, you can come around this altar. I don't want to be churchy. Don't give me another joke. Give me the Word. Don't slap another hand on me and lie to me and tell me I'm going to be a millionaire. Tell me how I can live holy. Come on, come on. Wherever you are, just come. Pray with you. That's it. That's it. I want more. Three o'clock in the morning. I want more. When the church doors are closed, I want you want to be able to live this life with confidence. Come on, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah. Don't beg him. Don't beg it. I want more. You're not defeated. I don't care what you got caught up in. God can deliver you, and you can stay delivered. Come on, raise your hand, raise your hand. The grace of God is powerful. It's all sufficient. And the grace of God is inside of you. Amen. Now, I just want you to raise your hand as I pray. Lord, Christianity is not going down. The church of the living God will stand forever. We don't need any games. Or we don't need any politics. We just need your word. And as your people gather around this altar God. Go home with them tonight. Open up their understanding. Drop inside of them a determination to want you. It doesn't matter where they've been or what they've done. God, you have the power to cover all of their sins. You have the power to give them a second chance. But you also have given them the power to walk in the newness of life. Every day, something new. Every day, something fresh. Because Jesus is inside of you. Now, I want you to raise your hand and worship the Lord. You're not defeated. I said, you're not defeated. Realize what he has done. Realize that the real... King of kings and Lord of lords is living on the inside. You don't have to fake it. You just have to live it. You don't have to pretend. You just have to do the book. Whatever he tells you to do in the word, just do it. Obey him and you become spiritual. Obey him and you won't be carnal. Oh, come on. Open your mouth and praise him right now. I need the church to praise him. Come on, give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Thank you, Lord. Won't you feel me? Thank you, Lord.